Hi to everyone. Thanks for coming back. Uh, it will be a pleasure to moderate the, the following panel uh, called the Infrastructure Panel. Thanks to Arab Advisors to invite, for inviting us for this discussion. And thanks to our colleagues, uh, Mr. Faris from FTTH Council, uh, Mr. Madur from Tech Mahindra, and Mr. Philip Vogeler from Vodafone Group. Uh, the, the panel, my name is Santino Saguto. I am responsible for TMT in Deloitte Middle East. Um, all the panel members have a very extensive experience in the, in the telco industry. Um, Mr. Faris has been working, I think, about 25 years in the, in the industry and more recently as a chairman and CEO of FTTH. Uh, Mr. Madur has been for 15 years or more with Tech Mahindra and also has some experience with NSN. And, uh, and Philip uh, has been actually been, been working in a number of companies, including Orange and including Orange Jordan, as some of you may know. And then uh, for Uridu uh, in, uh, in Oman and more recently for, uh, for Vodan, Vodafone Group. So I would ask each of the panelists to bring uh, uh, the contribution of this extensive international as well as, uh, as, uh, as a regional experience. Now, the panel topics are, uh, uh, include various aspects, but basically there are two of them. W one is about infrastructure and policy related to the development of uh, infrastructures, but we will not only look from the policy aspect, we also look from regulatory competition and, uh, and, uh, and operators as aspects. And the other topic is related to cloud both uh, uh, or, or even uh, uh, virtualized uh, network, and we can discuss about the status of what the operators are doing globally and uh, in the region, and the development of, 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 cloud, uh, of cloud services. Uh, I mean, although it's a big audience, but still it's not huge, so I would invite uh, all of you to, to participate to the discussion, so to be a broader panel discussion, not only the four of us here, but uh, we would love to have the, the contribution of your expertise in the industry. Uh, we will have a session on the Q&A and we will have three questions uh, for you to, to stimulate the discussion. And uh, in the 45 minutes that we have, uh, it will be or less, it will be great. Uh, very appreciated to have your contribution. Now, let me start uh, with a brief introduction of the, of the topic. Uh, the topic of infrastructure is, of course, is, uh, we have talked a bit about that during the day, uh, is, a, is a very hot one because uh, it's clear globally and it's clear in the region that the development of the ICT sector has a very important impact in the economy of the market, in the, in the business system, and in the people. And uh, the infrastructure part is, uh, is the fundamental uh, uh, level to then build uh, 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 services and all the other uh, uh, layers. Um, recently, uh, one of the uh, important starting points for the proper development of infrastructure in many countries around the world is the development of national broadband plans. Uh, a recent uh, article was saying that 70%, 70 percent, 70 percent of the global countries have their own national broadband plan. And the national broadband plan is a very important starting point to define the policies related to the development of the infrastructure. Also in the Middle East, uh, uh, I think only two countries as of today have not developed their own uh, national broadband plan. One is, uh, for whatever a bit strange reason, one is UAE which is a bit behind in the process. And the other is Kuwait, but the justification of Kuwait is that only now they're having the first TRA ever, if any. Uh, while Jordan has had his own plan since a long time ago. Having the plan does not mean that you'll be able to implement it. Uh, because uh, managing the stakeholders uh, of the plan uh, is a very important component 
and many of these plants are also published online, uh, so it can be interesting reading for you. And these plants focus on infrastructure or, or uh, on services. Now, once developed the plan, the next question is what's the role of the regulator and the, the role of the operators as related to uh, uh, the development of the telecom infrastructure, and that's where the issue starts, particularly these days in terms of funding and investments into the infrastructure, and the operators more and more claim that they're not growing enough the revenues in their core business to sustain the investment required. And in fact, there are then many areas in each country that are not covered by broadband or whatever just because it's not economically uh, feasible. Um, all of this will be discussed uh, in, uh, in the panel. In, the, in addition, we will talk about cloud. Cloud uh, is indeed uh, uh, more uh, present in the region as a potential growth area than it was uh, in the past. Uh, many research for, from Cisco, from Gartner and so on say that uh, Middle East is one of the regions with the highest growth potential for cloud services. Uh, so cloud we can see from the point of view of telco operators requesting uh, uh, virtualized network or cloud services to their uh, infrastructure provider or telco operators providing cloud services to their business uh, uh, community and, uh, and customers. This is a general introduction. Uh, on the cloud, on the virtualized network side, you may have read recently, just a few days ago, an article on, uh, on uh, uh, mobile making a deal with Alcatel uh, on uh, virtualized management of, uh, of radio access network or Cisco has made some announcement or developing uh, uh, an service provider model, so definitely in the region. So uh, interesting topics to discuss uh, uh, today. So going back to our panelists, my, my, my first introductory question would be uh, for each of you, uh, of course, to present your role and your view in the industry as related to uh, the topics of the, of the discussion, and also how do you see uh, global trends uh, and how, why they are relevant for the region. And uh, we can be very open because the, the topics are very broad, so you can see from the customer point of view, you can see from the infrastructure point of view, so I leave it to you based on your experience and uh, on, on deciding which, which, uh, which, uh, uh, which angle uh, to cover. Um, I, 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 I would start uh, um, maybe with Philip that is close to me and, uh, and on, on his view on your role in the industry and the company where you are and how do you see these global trends in these areas of why do you think they are relevant for the region? Please. Good afternoon to all. I hope that coffee was good and that you're all woken up again. Um, my role in the industry is to look after um, new businesses for uh, Vodafone Group. Um, we're present one way or another in about 85 countries in the world. Um, so that allows somehow to, to have a trend or a good view of what's going on across the globe. Um, I was invited actually to a roughly similar panel uh, in this place um, two years ago. So when preparing this, my lazy self went to look at my notes. Um, you know, they, they always say that strategy is about having a, a long-term view and then probably checking whether you were right or wrong um, after a few years. So, so I did that. Um, the, the, at the time, I, I basically mentioned three main points. Um, the first one is that the, the mother of all telecom debates, as was mentioned by, by many people this morning and, and at the last, um, um, this afternoon by Raslan, um, the, the mother of all telecom debates is data. Um, w w there is a need for more. Uh, there is a need for more infrastructure. And, and that's probably the debate we all have to focus our energy on. So, so on that point, um, I was right. I, I, I also mentioned that the, the, 
this debate is important, not because of us as telecom players, but probably um, because society demands it. I, I think, if I remember well, it's, the, it's King Abdullah of Jordan who mentioned at the WEF about now something like three or four years ago, that, that the difference between making an all-inclusive ICT society and not making it would basically amount to 80 million jobs being created or not uh, within the next 10 years. So practically, I it's a very fundamental question to maintain, well, the aspirations of the youth covered and pr therefore probably stability as well. Um, so, so that one is still valid as well. Um, then, then I checked the last point, and the last point was that at the time, research was saying that um, data increase would go from where it is today, which is about 5 to 10 exabytes a, a year, um, to something like 125 exabytes per year. And, and that has proven dramatically wrong, so my apologies for having carried something that is not correct. Um, reality is that the latest research today shows that we're not going to go to 125 exabytes, but we're going to go to beyond seven zettabytes. Now, of course, this is a bit of jargon, but for, for the ones who don't know, an exabyte is a billion gigabytes, and a zettabyte is a billion exabytes. So, so it's, it's an increase by an unbelievable factor. Now, of course, we can question whether this type of research is correct, not correct, are they wrong? But, but then again, whatever carries the word zettabyte in it is enormous in scale, which, which basically means that um, the challenge that has been identified by all of us um, during the day and, and in the past is still very valid, but I wouldn't want to increase dramatically the sense of urgency here. But, but that's basically what we have to do. The demand of people, our customers, the population, is to consume more and more data. And, and that is going by a factor that none of us had foreseen, and therefore none of us is able to cope with at the moment. Which, which basically means that we need to, to um, find a way to at the same time, finalize the coverage of the population. Somebody mentioned Karak and fiber optics earlier on. So of course I checked um, again, where is Karak again? And, and it's a bit of a, of, of a smaller city in Jordan. But then again, why not? Everybody might have the same aspirations and therefore everybody might want to have the same type of connectivity. Um, but, but it's time to plan. We need to have connectivity of decent scale and that can be I'm personally in favor of having different connectivity in cities, towns, and villages, simply because the business needs in those different places are different, and also because offering the same to everybody is not affordable. Um, and, and then basically at the same time with coping with this unbelievable increase of demand, and at the same time maintaining prices at what is affordable by the vast majority of the population. So, so it's, a, it's a number of challenges that are all coming together at the moment. And frankly, if we don't tackle them, well, then the industry in itself will have failed. And if the industry fails, then, then we will be calling for other people to do it for us. So, so we really need to, to have a sense of urgency, us and the regulators. Sorry to look at my screen, but I basically typed my notes in my mobile. So um, the, the <laughs> ubiquitous machine. Um, the, the, um, there are a number of initiatives that have been taking place around the globe, starting with um, the New Zealand model, where um, we, Vodafone, build a network in all rural areas and lease it to our competitors so that nobody has to duplicate network. Um, to Kenya, where um, the regulator in exchange of renewing spectrum, and that's the same in Egypt, um, is, is asking operators to consider national roaming so that, you know, carrying transmission is, is getting better and access is, is getting better. Um, Australia, where the government has decided to use public money to, to basically build ultra-fast networks, which is a, probably a fascinating solution, but probably unaffordable by 90% of the countries in the world. Um, the, the UK, where in the UK um, each pair of two operators have decided to combine their networks so that networks become cheaper, etc. And then what is quite impressive is that when I went through that list of initiatives, uh, the Middle East is a bit back. 
So it's at the same time the place where you need most of this because vast distances, population being scarce, etc. But it's also the place where these initiatives are lesser. Now, I'll finish on a, on a positive touch, which is there is a bit of light over the t uh, at the tunnel. For the ones who've read the press in the last uh, months on telecoms, uh, you might know that um, 10 of the largest telecom operators in the world have signed a memorandum of understanding uh, with the help of the GSMA, under which uh, we've all committed to do more in terms of infrastructure sharing, precisely with a view to uh, cope with these challenges of covering more, providing more speed, more consumption, and maintaining prices at, at affordable level. Um, frankly, we didn't define yet what more means, so work needs to be done now. But that's precisely the right moment for a discussion like this one, because it's the right moment for regulators and industry to start discussing about what are we talking about? What do we want to share? What would make a difference? What is just blah, blah, really? It's great to have broadband plans, but if you have broadband plans that cannot be implemented, frankly, they're useless. So this is the, the right moment, and again, um, sense of urgency. We need to solve these things, and we need to solve them now. Thanks, Philip. Um, Mr. Faris, in your role related to FTTH Council and IPv6, uh, it, I think it's important you, you give your view also, possibly getting back uh, on your view on the comment of Philip that maybe Middle East is, is, is behind. And from your point of view, why, why is uh, Middle East behind, uh, if you agree with that? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I would like firstly to touch on, on uh, the FTTH Council. The FTTH Council, in lieu of uh, what the gentlemen been mention, have been mentioning uh, since this morning, that there is a big demand uh, for broadband, and we believe that the way forward for new generations to have uh, an opportunity at the future, they need to be connected. And, and uh, uh, the best way is to be connected uh, with utilizing a technology that is future-proof uh, in a way. Now, we understand that uh, uh, in, in a utopia, this is uh, ultimately uh, the, the best technology, but uh, uh, balancing uh, technology deployment with, with market demand and economics uh, is, is also uh, an important consideration. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, read some of the notes that I've, I've, I've uh, written down. Now, uh, I understand that some of the notes are uh, repetitive uh, of, again, what, what's been mentioned uh, since this morning, but uh, uh, in our area, we have certain issues that are specific to our area that I feel, particularly to Jordan and, and to the rest of the Middle East, that is, is worth highlighting. And uh, we would hope that uh, uh, the, the main drivers of, of uh, the ICT industry would, would hear the messages uh, uh, like the regulators and, and the uh, telcos. Uh, uh, it, it would be important to highlight uh, a stereotype impression that regulators have been sitting uh, on opposite sides from the operators and, uh, and the role of the regulators have been to force a better deal for the consumer and to obtain the best revenue for the government uh, from the sector. At this point, the sector is heavily battered with revenues uh, diluting, which affects the capability of the operators to reinvest and continue uh, to play the role of ICT industry spearheaders in the geographies they are in. And also the operators uh, are facing a fundamental operator model change uh, and go forward strategy challenges. I think it's important for regulators to view their role as a godfather, as a godfather for the sector and start worrying about the sector long-term sustainability. The importance of the creation of a sector joint regulator and service provider go forward vision and targets is quite crucial at this stage. And I, I would like to say that this, this particular uh, note is, is, is very important for, for countries with 
economic challenges. So the, the, the economic challenge in Jordan and make it more mandatory, more necessary for the operators to, to uh, for the regulators and the operators to, to uh, see a common vision forward. Uh, uh, for, the, for the landline network regulators, uh, uh, we see that the, 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 the uh, uh, operators should strive to establish fiber as the go-forward plan uh, in new green fields with avoiding infrastructure investment duplication. The models to achieve this are several, either through government investment in the infrastructure or through PPPs. As for brownfields, by definition, the incumbent uh, operators are usually dominant and investment in a new landline network is usually uh, unfeasible, except for certain cases. Then the regulator is, is forced to establish a fair right of way uh, on the incumbent's network and to provide enough frequency uh, band to allow wireless broadband service uh, offering. As for the wireless infrastructure, in my opinion, infrastructure consolidation and avoidance of investment duplication is the way forward again, with the revenues diluting and ROIs uh, becoming less lucrative for the operators. Regulators should play a more active role in uh, breaking the ice and forcing the model of site co-location to start at least in the new expansions. Uh, uh, as for the, as for the uh, 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 cloud services, uh, the, the approach and strategy of operators with regards to network virtualizations uh, uh, and cloud services are still in their infancy uh, uh, and uh, are forced with the uh, resist are faced with the resistance of the operators to change uh, customers' mental status uh, and uh, critical mass. Um, most most of the of the somewhat successful uh, cloud services have been carried out primarily in the Gulf and particularly in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I, I am, uh, I've, I've been looking over uh, even some of the operators in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I, I see probably the most advanced in the, with regards to cloud services, probably mobile uh, in, in Saudi Arabia, per, per my impression at least. Uh, and even within mobile, I see that there are, there are quite substantial challenges. Uh, uh, in uh, with with the service offering, with the acceptance mindset, and so on. In 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 smaller economies like Jordan, it is the the challenge is even bigger because the uh, uh, companies are mostly uh, small, and even by scale, what we call here medium is is really not not uh, large. So it's it is still by international standards quite small. So the challenge is even bigger. Thanks a lot for this. <clears throat> Mr. Madur, you yeah. probably can help us also have uh, uh, a view of where we stand in the Middle East as related to cloud data centers, ICT. Yeah. Uh, uh, my name is Madhur Kripal. Uh, I work with the uh, you know, Tech Mahindra. I mean, uh, uh, let me give a different spin or a different perspective you know, of what uh, you know, I've been hearing today. A lot of, you know, uh, regulatory, you know, pressures, you know, tax pressures, uh, you know, uh, ARPU's falling down and so on. But there's one particular area that we have seen a lot of growth uh, in the uh, MENA region as well as outside of, uh, you know, the MENA region uh, in Europe uh, and in Americas, is uh, telcos really focusing on the enterprise sector, right? The enterprise sector, I mean, uh, you know, large, uh, you know, large enterprises, uh, SMBs, uh, and the government. Now, uh, with the cloud actually coming in and operators well poised, you know, to, uh, you know, deliver those technologies or the services, we are seeing a lot of operators uh, in the Gulf, you know, taking various strides, you know, moving in very fast, you know, to capture uh, uh, this particular, you know, uh, growing market. Now, let it be operators like, uh, you know, Etisalat, Saudi, uh, you know, Saudi Telecom, you know, et cetera. Uh, all of them are offering, you know, services such as uh, infrastructure services, infrastructure as a service you know, platform as a service and, you know, uh, you know, software as a service, right? So we're seeing these trends, you know, really pick up, you know, very well, uh, you know, with uh, the enterprise sector. The other thing that I wanted to say is uh, whilst this is happening, 
uh, there is a lot of work that's being done by the operators on the data center consolidation and, and on their infrastructure that, that, uh, you know, that enables them to provide you know, the telecom services. So, we, uh, so we're seeing a lot of uh, you know, work around that space uh, you know, picking up uh, you know, big time. Uh, the cloud is a very disruptive technology. It allows non-traditional players you know, to get into you know, the market. And what we are seeing is that the operators are very well placed, given that the services that they offer today are of 99.999 you know, resilience and highly reliable. So they are well placed you know, to offer these services. Now, now that is one. What we're also seeing is that cloud getting into the telecom network itself. Uh, we've all heard about SDN, that's software defined you know, networking, you know, where you're able to, you know, uh, where you're able to, you know, define, uh, you know, the, the, you're able to, to, to uh, um, uh, split the infrastructure, you know, from the software piece. And we're also seeing, you know, standards like the Open Networking Foundation, you know, where uh, companies like Google, uh, you know, Deutsche Telekom, Facebook, you know, Microsoft, all coming together and, you know, bringing up the standards, you know, that are uh, uh, required uh, in the cloud uh, arena today.